Hello everybody, this is Jeff again, and today we're going to talk about how to use EBSCO's Literary Reference Center. So you'd go to the library webpage, so I'm at the Boulder County Campus Library webpage. We're going to go into EBSCO, that database is within EBSCO. When this opens up, <clears throat> you're going to go to where it says Literary Reference Center. And this is a specialized area of EBSCO set up just to do literature type research. So when we open this up here, and we're talking literature, I'm talking about writing fiction, plays, things like that, poetry. You're in a class like a literature class, and uh, specifically you're looking for that. General EBSCO is great for all kinds of information, but if you're just looking for literary uh, information, this would be a good one to use. So we'll just do a basic search here. It's very similar to EBSCO, and I'm going to go I'll search for Margaret Atwood. I can spell it right here. There we go. Okay. Do a search. Let's see what comes back here. So we have 601 articles on Margaret Atwood, and it's kind of overwhelming in that they're all in this one area. Or you could break them up by these tabs. If these tabs are really useful. So this first tab is biographies. These are going to give you short biographies of Margaret Atwood. It's not going to be an entire book, but it's going to give you kind of all the high points. There's a picture of her tells you her major works, the different genres she writes in, her achievements, awards, and then down to her actual bio, kind of a quick story of her life. And then if you go back to that list, <clears throat> there were a bunch of different biographies of her. So there's quite a bit of information on her there. Literary criticism, this would be uh, analysis of her work. So these aren't really book reviews, what these are is someone has has done an analysis of one of her works and has written a paper on what does this work mean well, you know where does it fit in with other literature are there any mythological themes in it are there any metaphors is there any are there any political statements being made in in the work and is there any symbolism kind of like what you're probably going to be doing on on your paper these are like professional versions of those papers so just open up one of these here see a summary of it. Now anytime that you don't see the full article when you first open this up, look around for the, the, the full text button. It says PDF full text. And then that brings up the whole thing there. Let's go back to the result list. There's one on The Handmaid's Tale. That's, that's asked for a lot. That's a pretty assigned work. And you could also, if you're just doing one work by her, you could do a search up here just for The Handmaid's Tale, for instance. Plot summaries. This is cool here. This is if you want to, if you're doing a paper, say, on The Handmaid's Tale, and you want to relate this to some of her other work, but you don't have time to read all of her other books, you could go into one of these and get a basic idea of what's going on in these other books by her. It wouldn't be enough to write a whole paper on it, but if you're just going to kind of mention it and its parallels to The Handmaid's Tale, for instance, you could go in here and get an idea of what this book is about and have it kind of summarized for you so that you could, you could at least relate it to the, to the work that you're actually studying. We go back here. Let's see. So there were 71 different uh, plot summaries to her different books in there. Reviews. These would be book reviews. Literary magazines or just general magazines that read one of her books and has a review. Is is this one good? How does this one stack up against her other works? Um, interviews. We can go here and get some interviews with Margaret Atwood. Reference books. These would be sections of reference books that talk about her work. Periodicals, these would be general journals or magazines that have published articles on her. Uh, if we click poems, we're going to get if there's any full text poems we have on here. And this will give, if we click onto that one, we'll get the actual full text of the poem in here. There it is. Go back here to the result list again. And short stories, if they have any short stories by her, there'll be, in the, and the full short story is in here. And images some pictures of Margaret Atwood in here. That might be useful to you. So that's that's pretty much how this database works. It's, it's pretty easy to use. Um, let's talk about, let's go back, let's say <clears throat> if you were going to use one of these articles and you wanted to cite it. The citation is a little different from normal EBSCO. What I would do for these is I would click up here where it says, so I went into the abstract or the citation for it. I will click on save, even though I'm not really going to save it. And I'm going to click here where it says citation format. 
I'm going to change that to MLA. Click Save. Now it has kind of a citation here that's pretty close to being correct. So what I would do is I would highlight that, copy it. I'm going to right click there, copy. <clears throat> Go into Word. I have my Works Cited page set up. This is going to be the last page of your paper. And I'm going to paste that citation in here so that I can edit it to make it correct. Now for the most part it looks pretty good. Um, let me highlight this. We're going to change the font. The font should be Times New Roman 12 point. And then let's see what else. Is there any other errors in here or anything? It looks, it looks good. <clears throat> so far it looks really good. Now you don't need EBSCO in here. <clears throat> EBSCO is kind of a vendor of databases. The actual database as far as MLA is concerned is Literary Reference Center. So another thing we need to change here this needs to be made double spaced. So let's go up here to paragraph. This is how I do it. You probably there's probably other ways to do it. I go into paragraph, make sure the hanging indent is correct and the margins are all correct and then click on double spaced. So there you go. Let's make sure there's that looks pretty close there. Is there a space there? There we go. Yeah, and actually it it was correct. It just looked it just looked like it wasn't correct. Okay, and um, let's see what else go. Oh, you know, it looked like it added an extra space up here. I'm going to go up there and take that out. Okay, so that's a really good-looking citation. That's how you would do a citation from Literary Reference Center. And uh, let's go here back. And let's say you only were interested in The Handmaid's Tale, for instance. You could search just for that, too, and not look at all of her works. <clears throat> go into Literary Criticism. And these articles are probably all going to be about The Handmaid's Tale now. So uh, that's, that's the basic way that you use this database. There's, there's some other things you can do. If you go into advanced search, there's some, there's some neat searches you can do. Well, also, there's kind of a, some cool things. As you're working, let's say you come across a word you don't understand. You could go into the literary glossary, look up the word, type in here, illusion. Let's say you can't remember what that means, and that keeps coming up in, in one of these articles. You could just look that up, and then you could read what illusion means. I'm going to close that. You could also go into the Encyclopedia of Literature. Let's say you wanted just a real quick rundown on who Kurt Vonnegut is. Kurt Vonnegut. You just get a real quick rundown of him, and it's kind of it's kind of a an abbreviated form of what we just looked at. We could go into biographies. That's kind of neat, isn't it? It's just all right in one place. And you might you might prefer doing that to the other thing. There's plot summaries, and it takes us back to what we just had. That's that's pretty cool. OK. Um, also, let's take a look here. There's also kind of a neat thing, the literary historical timeline. If you go into here, you can kind of just get a quick update on everything that's gone on in literature throughout the ages, kind of the major events here. The Epic of Gilgamesh, written down. 1300 BCE. We could go in here. Let's see what was happening in the 1600s. Hamlet first performed around 1600. That's kind of neat. So uh, that is how you use Literary Reference Center. And there's like all these databases. There's more things you could do with it, but that's that's the basics of it. If you need any more help with this, please contact me in the library. I can call me, email me, or just stop by, and I'd love to help you with this. Okay, uh, for right now on Literary Reference Center, that's, that's all I got for you. So I think with what we showed you today, I think you would be able to use this pretty well. And uh, I will talk to you later.